Hello and welcome to The Crimson Stitchery. My name is Anushka and you can find me elsewhere online as a sour telling. That's my username on Ravelry and Instagram too. This video is a quick and easy tutorial for how to upcycle a cotton tote bag, such as this, into a drawstring project bag. Da -da -da -da. If you're anything like me, you've probably ended up with absolutely tons of these kind of cotton shopper tote bags. A lot of the time they're given away free as samples or as promotions from different companies. These two bags were ones that I got for free. Um, it, there was literally a box of them on the floor in a library and I just grabbed a few and ran away. <laughs> they pile up at home. Obviously there's only so much grocery shopping that we could do. You might have noticed this little drawstring bag appear in some of my videos already and it's one that I knocked up myself so quickly using materials that I already had at home. So I thought I'd just share this project with you here today. For this project you will need a measuring tape. Always need a measuring tape for every project. You'll need some scissors, fabric scissors here, embroidery scissors here. You'll need needle and thread or a sewing machine if you've got one and know how to use one, great. Some pins are always super helpful. Of course you're going to need your tote bag to upcycle and you're going to need some ribbon or cord in order to make the drawstring. Optional is some lining fabric. Here I've got some um, poly cotton printed fabric that I found at the back of the cupboard. These are all materials that I have lying around at home. It's possible that you might do as well. If not, you can always find someone to borrow things from because stuff like a bit of ribbon and a bit of scrap fabric, most people who sew are gonna have plenty to spare. So the first thing to do is to grab yourself a cotton tote. So because I've already made one from this um, exhibition promotion bag, I'm gonna be making a second drawstring bag out of this one, which promoted the uh, British Academy Literature Week 2015 and I think it's a really sweet one because um, it's sort of got this Alice in Wonderland down the rabbit hole kind of image. So the first thing that you need to do is open up your bag and check out what it's like inside. Hopefully the seams inside will be finished. Here they've been overlocked and hopefully these handles will have been attached separately from the bag. That's normally the case. So you can see here, the insides have been overlocked. On the existing bag that I made, the insides are actually even better quality because they have been finished off with French seams. You need to decide at this point whether you would like to keep the bag as it is, super simple, or if you would like to add in a lining. So if you don't want to add in a lining and your seams inside are not finished, so they've not been overlocked, they haven't been treated with a French seam, they've just got the raw edges showing, then you will need to finish the seams yourself. So you will need to go in with zigzag stitch on the sewing machine and just zip down them. Or if you don't have a sewing machine, you will have to go in and do blanket stitch in order to catch the raw edges and stop it all unraveling and your project bag disintegrating. But if like me, and it's quite likely that the seams will be finished, that's absolutely fine. So I'm now gonna show you how to make the unlined drawstring bag like this one here. It's just the basic bag no lining, nothing special at all. So step one, what you need to do is cut off the handles of the bag and you need to do this really carefully so that you only take off the handle and none of the fabric of the bag. Just pull it down and I'll carefully snip. And I've cut the handle off right close to the top edge and I'm just gonna leave it like that. If you're really fussy, you could unpick all of that there and cut it down too, but I'm not going to bother. <laughs> okay, let's do the other one. So these handles are now scrap, but you could repurpose them. For example, you could use them in your garden. If you look at any plants that are looking a bit wonky, sunflowers, rose bushes, um, anything really that needs a bit of support, you could use these to tie up your plants next to a stake and keep them standing upright. So they'll just go in the scraps pile. Next step is to make the casing for the drawstring. And you're gonna do that by quite simply folding down the top hem, so the hem that's already there, you just fold it down upon itself all the way around. 
And as you can see, I've got these care labels poking out the top. So I'm actually gonna go in with my smaller pair of scissors and I'm gonna snip them away. I've got the option of keeping them and sewing them back on later. And then you need to just pin down that casing to the front of the bag. You can see here it's covering up the top of the logo a little bit, but I'm not really bothered about that. This bag is four years old already, so I think it's time that it served another purpose. Now you're pinning down the top, but when you get to the sides of the bag, what you need to do is make sure that you leave a gap of about an inch and a half or about four centimeters. So, so that you remind yourself to do that, put two pins in vertically on either side of the hem. It's just an approximate amount. Um, it doesn't have to be completely scientifically accurate. And then just carry on going round and um, pinning the hem down. And then when you get to the other side, again, remind yourself to leave that gap by popping two pins in there. So now you need to stitch down this casing from the outside and you start here at one vertical pin and you go all the way across to the other one. You can stitch it down on a sewing machine or by hand if you don't have a sewing machine. I've decided to go in with a navy thread to match my navy drawstring and I'm just stitching down over the top of the original stitch line that was used for the hem. So I decided to go in with a navy thread because I knew I wanted to have a navy drawstring and I just made sure that um, I stitched really close down to the edge of the original hem and in fact over the original stitching of the hem. So obviously you can see the stitching there, that doesn't bother me at all, but if that bothers you, obviously go in for a neutral colour that will blend in with the background. And I'm just going to trim off the excess threads. The third and final step is to prepare the drawstring. So just go ahead and measure your bag, double it to get the circumference, and then add about five centimeters or so. I'm just gonna take it up to 80 centimeters just to make it easy, so that's eight centimeters. Um, and you wanna do that in order to get some slack. Then decide if you want to have a single drawstring or a double, and I'm gonna go ahead and use this gorgeous um, navy blue ribbon that is blowing out because it's crazy windy outside and the weather doesn't know what it wants to do. So just go ahead and cut that length of ribbon, 80 centimeters. Be careful you don't cut your finger or the measuring tape. <laughs> then you'll need to thread your drawstring bag. So an easy way to do this is using a safety pin. So just take that safety pin Clip it through the end of the ribbon or cord like that. And then go in through the gap that you left on the outside and just push it all the way through the bag. Just be careful while you're doing this that you don't allow the other end of the cord to go through. I make sure that that doesn't happen by pinning the other end to the bag. So I'll just go ahead and push that safety pin all the way through. And you can see as you start to do that, that the bag itself is gathering up nicely. Okay, I've come out the other end. Ta-da! And then just push the slack of the bag all the way around, distributing the gathers. Again, making sure that you don't lose sight of your safety pin, which I just did, but luckily it's not gone too far away. Okay, the final step is to match up the two ends of your cord, hold them together and tie them in a double knot. Trim away any loose ends and that's it, your drawstring bag ready to go. 
If, like me, you've used a ribbon as opposed to a nylon cord, you might find that it's a bit stiff. Um, there's a lot of friction, so it's hard to draw the drawstring together smoothly. So that's why I leave the other end open, so that you can just pull the other end of the cord out if necessary. And you might also want to put in a second cord to facilitate that double drawstring much more easily. If, like me, you've used ribbon rather than cord, you may find that the ends start to fray. So you should treat the fraying ends with either um, clear nail polish or a specific fray check solution, or just take a match and burn it. Very, very carefully. Just run the edge of the flame over the ribbon. It will melt and burn and seal in the edges nicely so that it won't fray anymore. That's it! Ready for some knitting! Now as an extra step I'm going to show you how to put a lining into your bag. I've been using this bag for a little while now and I've decided to put in the lining for a couple of different reasons. Firstly is just because this bag was already quite old and it's starting to get a little bit worn out in places so a lining is going to reinforce the bag. Additionally when you first acquire these reusable shopping bags a lot of the time they feel very very stiff and that's because the fabric has been treated with a sizing solution um, and basically after you've washed it in the washing machine for a few times that sizing gets washed out which makes the fabric very very floppy. Um, another reason for which you might wish to put a lining into your bag is if the bag that you've used was a dark colour, if it was black, and you may wish to put in a light coloured lining fabric just so that it's a little bit easier to see what you've got inside. So ideally you would have applied the lining into the bag before threading through the drawstring cords but as you can see I'm going to be doing it afterwards and it's no big deal you just have to be a little bit conscious of the drawstring placket. So for my lining I've chosen this polycotton fabric this is a scrap that I just had lying around and polycotton which is a blend of polyester and cotton is something that I find a little bit scratchy a little bit rigid and I wouldn't choose to use it for a garment but it's perfect for lining something like this that I'm not too precious about and I've gone for a light colour. Um, I originally wanted to use a navy lining to match the navy pull cord and the navy details on the bag but what I found was that the bag fabric was quite thin so the navy actually showed through so I've just decided to stick with a light coloured fabric and the first thing that I need to do is measure up the size of my lining so we'll start off just by figuring out the size of the bag so the width is pretty simple we're just going to measure across um, the width of the bag so I've got 37 centimeters you can do it in obviously inches or centimeters whatever works for you just take a note so I've got width 37 and then we're going to measure the length and we're going to measure not all the way to the top of the bag but actually to the top of the placket stitching so um, obviously depending on the width of the hem that you folded down this is going to differ for you. Um, if you haven't already stitched down the placket but you want to do your cutting right at the beginning just to get it out of the way you just need to figure that out and minus the difference so if I measure the, all the way to the top, up to my stitching, I've got 35 centimetres and the placket was an additional 2.5 centimetres or an inch. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that I stop there at the stitching because the lining is not going to go all the way to the top, it's going to stop before. So length 35. And then we need to think about adding on our seam allowance. So because this is just a bag lining and I'm not being too precious about it, I'm just going to work with the size of the piece of lining fabric that I actually have. Um, so I've got enough length on my fabric so that I can just cut a long strip and then fold it in half. But you may need to cut the lining fabric into two pieces and seam them together at the bottom. So I'm going to cut a length of fabric that is double the length of my finished piece. So I had 35, so if I double that, that's 70 centimetres. 
So the width is 37 and the length is 70. And then I need to add on my seam allowances. So I like to keep this simple. At the top, I'm gonna to fold down 1.5 centimeters. So that means that I need to add 1.5 centimeters on each side of the lip, adding a total of three centimeters. If you're working in inches, you could just keep this simple, add one inch, and that makes a hem allowance of half an inch on each side. So that goes to 73 centimeters length. And in terms of the width, now you could add on your 1.5 centimetres on each side, um, adding a total of three centimetres or half an inch and an inch total. However, I'm going to be a little bit lazy and I'm actually only going to add on 0 0.75 centimetres onto each side. So I'm going to be adding on the width of 1.5 centimetres. So in terms of if you're working in inches, an easy way to do this is a quarter inch on each side, adding a total of half an inch. And the reason that my side seam allowances are going to be so narrow is simply because I'm going to be using the width of my foot of my sewing machine as a guide. So I'm not going to make it too big. Um, if using tiny, narrow little seam allowances is something that you're unfamiliar or uncomfortable with, then do just go ahead and make the right calculations for having a slightly wider seam allowance. So including my seam allowances I'm going to cut a piece of fabric that is 38.5 centimeters wide by 73 centimeters long and then I'm just going to fold it in half down the length. So now I'm going to be cutting out my lining. At the bottom I just used a set square to check that I had a straight edge at the bottom because it did look like it was straight um, just using my naked eye however it turned out that there was quite a big discrepancy and there wasn't a right angle at all and also because this fabric has got these very thick horizontal stripes I've just folded the fabric in half and just double checked that the patterns are lined up accurately so I'm just doing a mild little bit of pattern matching and then again just because I've got this long piece of fabric, I'm having a fold at the bottom, but you might need to cut out two squares, in which case you'd need that extra bit of seam allowance on the bottom so that you could join it. So don't forget about seam allowance. Um, it's always more difficult to reverse engineer that, so you need to plan it ahead. So I've drawn my straight line, so I'm just gonna continue measuring out and cutting out my lining. Obviously, if you have a big cutting mat and a rotary cutter, um, if you've got some quilting supplies, then this all becomes much, much quicker. However, like many people, I learned to sew with quite minimal equipment. And hence, I'm doing this tutorial um, bearing that in mind. If you don't have a set square, you could just use a book or even a piece of paper or cardboard. You just want to check out those right angles. And then as I have drawn up my square, I can see, I'm not sure if it's coming through on camera, but I can see that my... Um, right angle that I've measured on the fabric against the grain, against the weaving of the fabric, isn't quite in line with the actual print of the fabric. And this is actually something that is pretty common, um, whether the fabric was cheaply acquired or whether it was quite expensive. You'll find that a lot of the time the printing and the pattern on the fabric doesn't quite align with perfectly straight geometric angles and that's just you know something that we have to accept I think because there's not a lot you can do about it and at the end of the day like I've been saying it's kind of my mantra it's not it's not a big deal um there's certain things you know certain details are a big deal and you need to take note of them but I think learning to make things is just about accepting that some things are within your limits and control and, and other things aren't. Right, so I've got that ready to go and so now the next step is to run the lining through the sewing machine. 
So I'm now going to stitch down the sides of my lining. It's still all folded up. Um, and as I said, I made the seam allowance just 0.75 centimetres, about a quarter of an inch, because I've already measured my foot and that is its width. And I'm just going to sew it straight away without any pins. You might prefer to put in some pins. And again, if you don't have a sewing machine, this is something that you could achieve by hand using a back stitch. So I now need to take this to my iron. I'm leaving the bag with the wrong side of the fabric facing up. Um, should have said that really, but hopefully that was obvious that the right side is inside and I've done the stitching with the wrong side. So I'll just trim away those excess threads and I'll give it a quick press. The next thing is to press down the top hem allowance. So. If you remember, this was for me 1.5 centimetres um, or half an inch, depending on your preferred unit. And this is pretty easy because it's all been done on the straight of grain, hopefully, if you measured your right angle. So it should be a case of simply opening it up. And I'm not doing anything particularly fancy with the seam allowances. I'm just going to turn them to one side. So that looks good to me, um, but you might want to double check. So I'll just grab my set square and then I'll just press that hem down with the iron. Get that seam allowance out of the way. So now that that's been pressed down, it's pretty much ready to go in the bag. So I've got my original bag and I'll just open this up, just trim down slightly some of the seam allowances in the corner. So I've just cut away a little bit of excess there. Hopefully you can tell that I've just rounded off and I've taken the point off the corner just so that there's a little bit less bulk there. And if your lining fabric is very thick, you could also do the same thing inside of this fold. You could just open it up and cut away a tiny bit of the seam allowance. Just literally a couple of millimetres take, taken away, um, about an eighth of an inch. So I'll do that on the other side. And then let's put it inside. So that's gone in. Now with the right side um, visible to us and all of those wrong sides are going to be trapped inside. And now I am going to use my pins because I need to line up the lining inside the bag. And I need to make sure that the top edge of my lining is just underneath that stitch line. So I've got the stitch line that you can see here in navy and my lining is just going right up to the line, slightly proud. And I will pin this one in to hold it in place. And as you can see, we do have the pull cord to worry about. So if you've already inserted this, just make sure that it's tucked away so that it doesn't get caught on any of the machine stitching. But hopefully you won't have inserted this yet because you will have watched the video to the end. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So I'm lining up the side seam line with the seam line of the original bag, getting the lining right up underneath it and I can feel with my fingers where the pull cord is. So I'll just get that out of the way. And then it's up to you if you want to pin all the way along. I'll just put in one. But again, you're just making sure that the top edge of the lining is sitting underneath that stitch line for the pull cords placket. 
And whereas I stitched the channel down with a navy thread, I'm just going to go in with my light coloured discrete thread so that it's not a very big deal on the outside there. So I'm now at the sewing machine, ready to put the lining in. However, because I do have the pull cord inside my um, channel of the bag, and I'm not going to take it out just to do this, I'm going to work around it, and I'm going to do that by swapping my sewing machine foot to the zipper foot. So that will come out. That one goes back in, and remember to turn the needle. And this allows me to sew really neatly right up to the edge without having to worry about all of that bulk of the pull cord inside there. Just make sure that you always remember to move the needle about accordingly. And so I'm just going to get started very slowly. I'll put the needle in to anchor it. And then I'm just double checking that my pull cord is out of the way, which it is. And then I'll just go ahead and sew all the way round, making sure that my lining is right up against that original navy stitch line. And I'm going quite slowly and I'm checking quite regularly to make sure that things are looking okay, which they are. And that is the bag all lined. Um, as you can see already, the bag has got a lot more body, it feels a lot stronger, and it's ready to fill up. I just need to re-find the two ends of my pull cords. And it's ready to go. So I found that these bags are really, really handy to have around the house um, because I like to knit with lots of different colours. It's a good way of organising various different balls of yarns for different projects. You could even have different parts of a sweater, for example, inside different bags um, and have it organised within a larger basket or a bigger project bag, especially with the lining, I think it, it's definitely been worth taking that extra step to put that in. And the bags are just so satisfyingly plump and round after you fill them up. Another use for these bags that I've had is as produce bags. So they're quite handy to just put in your sandwiches or your packed lunch or your produce when you're in the shop and then you can just throw it into your backpack or your larger shopping bags um, and it's just a nice way of organising it and another suggestion is if you bake sourdough bread it's really nice to just pop your fresh loaf in there you don't have to wrap it in plastic or anything and just simply pull the cord to shut it off. I hope that you've enjoyed this video tutorial and if you do try this out please do drop me a comment and let me know and if you have any other suggestions of what to do with old canvas totes if you've got way too many kicking around the house and you've found other ways to repurpose them drop me a comment below and let me know what they are because I would absolutely love to hear your suggestions. If you've enjoyed this video please do give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below here on YouTube. The Crimson Stitchery is a video channel about making all things beautiful and useful and it features a fortnightly craft podcast where I talk about everything that I've been making and doing as well as other regular tutorials, tips and workshops for you to participate in. Thanks so much for joining us, take care, bye bye.